When I was a child, we ate very differently to what most people eat now. I was brought up by some very old fashioned parents. They had me late in life. They actually were teenagers during the Second World War and they were both themselves brought up by elderly people. So they were very old fashioned and they had definite ideas about things. When I was young, we didn't have a freezer, we didn't have microwaves, anything like that. And we ate a lot more seasonally. And I think we ate a bit cheaper as well. Um, we didn't buy lots of products that, well, they just weren't around then than what we buy today. And one of the things we did was we ate very seasonally. Now my dad always had a bit of a veg patch going in the garden. And one of the things he used to grow in the garden, or what was growing in our garden, was things like apple trees for apples, and we had gooseberry bushes and rhubarb and black currants. Well, my rhubarb never does very well. My dad was fantastic at growing rhubarb. I have no idea what his secret is, and he's long gone now, so I will never know. But he was amazing, and we'd pick loads of rhubarb, and then we'd stew rhubarb, and we'd have it with custard for tea, or we'd make rhubarb crumble. And when it was growing, we would just eat it all the time, because we had no way of preserving it, unless my mum made some jam. But we just used to have a spate of, of weeks until the rhubarb had gone, of eating lots of rhubarb. And as I say, we'd have, say, a big bowl of rhubarb and custard, and that would be our tea. Uh, and it was sort of free because it was just growing continually in the garden. We would also have apples. In the autumn, um, the apple trees, obviously we'd pick apples. We'd have lots of stewed apple and custard, uh, apple crumble, apple pies. We did used to try and uh, save some of them. We'd sort of wrap them in newspaper and store them in a cool place so they would last. Uh, but we, we couldn't freeze freeze them or anything. I'm really lucky that in this day and age I have got a freezer so I can preserve things. So today I'm actually going to pick and stew my gooseberries. I have a gooseberry bush here and I'm going to pick my gooseberries now and I'm going to stew them and then I'm going to freeze them so that I can keep them for longer and uh, I'm going to be eating like stewed fruit, uh, stewed gooseberries and custard and stuff for tea because I really enjoy it and I, it always reminds me of being a kid at home and uh, being with my parents. So this is my, my gooseberry bush. I've had it for years. Um, I've netted it against the birds and the rabbits because believe it or not they love gooseberries. Um, as you can see there's quite a few around there. Um, I, my, my fruit is, is a little bit later than some people's because I'm so high up. But I bought this gooseberry bush, gosh, about 20 years ago now. And uh, so I've only had to buy it the once and put it in the ground. It keeps growing. And some years it has more gooseberries than others. But it, it would be a waste just to leave these to the birds when they're perfectly good for eating. So I'm going to pick as many as I can now and uh, then get cooking them. So I can't resist trying one. There's a bit of a taste test. A lot of people think gooseberries are sour, but uh, I've left these to ripen as long as I can on the bush, so they are quite soft now. Um, my children said apparently a lot of their partners have never tried raw gooseberries. I've always loved raw gooseberries. As a kid, I used to go out and, and eat gooseberries off the bush. So anyway, I'm going to try this now. Oh, it's lovely. Mm. They've got like seeds in them that you can eat. I take the little stalky bit off the top and the sort of little funny thing on the front. It's called topping and tailing. I'll just eat this and I'll show you. So when you pick pick the gooseberry and um, I take if the stalk bits left on there, I take that off. And then I'll take this little bit off here because gooseberries are quite a good size. They're easier to do. I lead this bit on with the black currants because it's too fiddly. But with the gooseberries, they're bigger. So I'll take this off. And it's called top and tailing, and I take those off before I eat them. Um, I might eat this one now. They are so nice. You do have to be a little bit careful with gooseberries. They do have thorns on them. Quite sharp. You can see that, quite sharp thorns. And for some reasons, nettles always love to grow around my gooseberries. So, but I'm just taking my time and uh, enjoying the afternoon and picking a few. I think there's quite a lot on here. 
I've already nearly filled my one dish. I think I'll probably have to do it in a couple of lots rather all in one go. Um, so yeah, I think I'm just going to fill this and what I'll do then is I will top and tail them. As I say, I'll take the stalky bits off that end and that on that end, give them a good wash and then I'll stew them on the stove. I'll show you that later. For um, I mean, it's not taking me long. It's literally taken me a few minutes to nearly pick a whole thing full. And then it saves me buying fresh fruit from the... Um, from the grocery stores and stuff which I mean fruit's gone so expensive and there is just as much nutrition in these and I'll stew those and use them as I say in crumbles or one of the things I could do if you find gooseberries are a little bit tart for you a bit sharp even though you do add a bit of sugar is that I will freeze these and then when I stew my other fruit, my black currants and my apples, I will, or and plums I might have this year as well, um, I'll mix them together and to make sort of different flavours and to sort of sweeten it up a bit with the apple. So yeah, very versatile. I love gooseberries. I might have another one actually. I think I'll pick it off the bush though rather than uh, empty out my dish. So it hasn't taken me very long to fill this big bowl. It's quite a big bowl, as you can see. There's loads left on the bush. I'm probably gonna get about three of these. But unfortunately, it's just started to rain. I didn't think it was going to. It was gorgeous, but there's a few spots of rain coming. So I'm gonna pop inside now before I get wet. I've topped and tailed and washed my gooseberries now. This is all the, the top and the tails in there. Just take a little while but it's not too bad so I've got quite a big pan full just in that one thing so I will get more than this so I've put about two pints of water in here because it's a massive pan and I, I I don't want them to stick to the bottom and I quite like a bit of fluid in there because when they freeze I and then I, I refreeze them um, I do like them to be sort of um, a bit more sloppy for pies and things. I'm going to add some sugar. Now I'm not going to add too much sugar. I mean I have a really sweet tooth but I have noticed that when you um, freeze fruit like stewed apples and stewed berries and gooseberries whatever when you then defrost them and use them at a later date they they're not as sweet as when you put them in the freezer. They seem to lose their sweetness. So I always have to add a little bit more sugar so I'm not going to bother putting too much in now and then I'll just add a little bit to taste um, when I actually use them. So I'm probably going to put two cups in just because this is actually a massive saucepan and then I'll bring it up to the boil with the lid on and then I will take the lid off and put them on simmer and just simmer them until they're really soft. Gooseberry stewing away. So here are my gooseberries. Um, I've stewed them now and they've cooled down quite a bit so I've put them in these containers. Uh, my dog is munching her tea in the background if you can hear some strange noises and I've got things cooking on the stove. But yeah I made, because I went and picked another load as well and got those stewed. So I've got eight containers and I'm going to put lids on them now, put them in the freezer and then I've got them for like compot, fruit compot for breakfasts or with custard or to make crumbles and um, it's going to be a lot cheaper than buying some of the fruit in the shops at the moment because that's gone really pricey. So I've got another load of gooseberries to do and then I've got to start on the black currants. <laughs> 